Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and my kitchen. It's Christina from Hourwood Home and today I'm going to take you along as I make a really simple autumn dessert. It's called Apple Brown Betty and it's been around for a long time, but it's not a recipe that many people use anymore. The version I'm using is a recipe I've modified based on an old one found in a 1960s cookbook. It's got a few changes, but it's still pretty simple. I'm making this recipe vegan today, so there's no butter in it, but previously I have made it with butter. The reason I'm making it without today is because I'm bringing this to a family function where there are members that don't eat any animal products, so I wanted to make a nice easy dessert and share it with you in case you are dairy-free or vegan or whatever. It's just a nice simple recipe that you can throw together quickly and it freezes well. So let's get into that. We are going to start by taking our baking pan and greasing that. This pan is about eight by eight inches. You can use a bigger or a smaller pan, but you might just end up with a thinner or a thicker cake depending on the size of your pan. So I'm just going to quickly coat this in oil. Normally I would do butter, but since I'm making it without butter, oil is fine. Alternatively, you could just line the baking dish with some foil or baking paper. You can also just rub the oil in with your hands if you choose, but I don't like to get my hands dirty or sticky even when I'm cooking, so I try to avoid that at all costs. So I'm just using a pastry brush to get in all those corners. Okay, that's done, let's set this aside. You'll also want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit using the convection setting if you have it. I'm going to do that at the end because my oven is very, very loud. In this bowl, I've mixed three quarters of a cup of lightly packed brown sugar with about a tablespoon of cinnamon. It's actually my homemade pumpkin pie spice, but if you don't have pumpkin pie spice, you can just use cinnamon. I didn't mix that together yet, so let me do that now. You can use light or dark brown sugar. I haven't tested this with white sugar or any other type of sugar, so I don't know if it would work out, but if you decide to try it, let me know. Okay, that's mixed. Then you're going to wash and chop up four cups worth of apples. I did not peel mine. You can if you want to, but honestly, I pretty much never peel my apples for baking and it ends up being fine. It doesn't affect the texture or the taste. But if you wanted to slice or if you wanted to peel them, you can. So this is four cups. I decided to do them in thin slices. You can dice them or do them in chunks if you want. Just make sure it's consistent. And then set this aside. Next, you're going to need two cups of graham cracker crumbs. And to that, you're going to mix another tablespoon of either cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice. If you are familiar with apple brown betties, you might know that typically they use breadcrumbs instead of graham cracker crumbs but I much prefer the taste and the texture of the graham cracker crumbs. I don't suggest using the chocolate graham crumbs, the honey or the vanilla or something like that would be better. So mix that together. Now, if you're using butter, you're going to use three tablespoons of melted butter. Since I'm using oil instead, I'm just gonna measure that out and mix it right into my graham cracker crumbs. I'm using olive oil because that's what I typically have. But if you have a different type of oil, as long as it is a liquid when you're measuring it, that should be fine. Olive oil sometimes has a very strong taste, which I'm not crazy about. So the cinnamon in the graham cracker crumbs is really going to help with that. And let's just mix that together. It's just a little easier for me to mix it with 
the bowl flat on the counter. The consistency you're looking for is it mostly well incorporated. It's going to have some chunks. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got some chunks and that's okay. We just want it to be moistened throughout. You know what? I think I'm going to add another spoon of pumpkin pie spice because I really like it and I think it's great for the season. It goes so well with apples even though it's technically a pumpkin pie spice. All right, so let's mix that all together. Okay, now I'm going to start layering everything. Let me clear a bit of space on my workstation here. So bring back your dish, get your apples, sugar mixture, and graham cracker crumbs. And we're going to layer these up until we are all through. I'm going to try to get an even layer where the bottom is covered and there aren't any gaps, but if it's not perfect, that's okay. Now take some of your brown sugar mixture and sprinkle that on. Don't use all of it because we're going to need that for our next layer. About half the mixture is going to go on these apples. And make sure you try to evenly coat the apples. Okay, that looks good. And now we're going to do the same thing with the graham cracker crumbs. About half is going on as the next layer. Make sure we get that in all the corners and covering all the apples evenly. It's not flat and that's fine because the apples stick out a bit. We just want to get everything relatively even so that it cooks evenly. Next layer with the rest of our apples. If you're using a bigger baking dish, you might just be able to do one layer. If you're using a smaller dish, you might get more than the two layers, but this recipe has been tested for, like I said, roughly an eight by eight or a nine by nine um, baking dish. I wouldn't suggest doing three layers in this size of dish because it's going to get a little high and it might bubble over and we don't want that. Okay, I think that looks good. Back to our brown sugar layer. Let's make sure we're trying to coat this as evenly as possible. It's okay if it's not perfect, but we just want to make sure that everyone gets a nice little apple piece with that cinnamon sugar on it. Final step, we're going to use the rest of our graham cracker crumbs. Well, I shouldn't say it's the final step. There is one more after this, which does seem a little bit strange if you're not familiar with this type of recipe, but I assure you it makes sense in the end. Let's make sure we're spreading this out nice and evenly as well. It's okay if some of the apples peek out. All right, I'm happy with how that looks. Let's do our final step. Our final step is to take two thirds of a cup, oh, two thirds of a cup of water, and we're just gonna pour that over the top. I know it sounds weird, but it makes a really nice crust on the top. 
I'm just using room temperature water, but you can use cold water. Even hot water would be fine. Try to pour that evenly, going slowly. I'm using a measuring cup with a little pouring spout and that makes it a lot easier. It might look like nothing is happening and the water is just running off, but that's okay. I feel like that's pretty much my baking or cooking philosophy. That's okay. All right, so this is what it looks like. I did my best to make sure it's evenly covered, but there might be a few sections that are a bit dry. And once again, that's okay. This dessert is still going to be delicious. So once your oven has been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, this goes in covered with foil, or if you are using a dish that has a lid that's oven safe, you can just put that on. We're going to bake this for 30 minutes. Then you're going to take the cover off and cook it for another 10 minutes until the apples are nice and tender. So let's get that in the oven. I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished.